everyone, and welcome to the show. Hello, Millie. You like the new intro? <laughs> I'm inspired by my friend Joseph Jaffe, who does a show every day at noon called Corona TV, and you can find it at coronatv.show, and that was kind of cute. So let me bring my mom on. Let's see. Hi, Mom. Welcome to the show. Hi, Steve. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here today. <laughs> this is the excitement for my day. I'm very happy to see you. You look great today. Thank you. I put on lipstick today. Yeah. Well, that it shows. It's very big nice. Deal. A big deal. Thank you. So I know I I look forward to it too, and it's really been just great. It's been a wonderful thing to do together. And what we're doing is, I gave you a gift from my friend Jan Zlotnick, and he wrote a book called Twenty Three Things I Wish I Could Ask My Mom and Dad Today." So you've enjoyed the book and chosen a question that we're going to ask. We're going to answer the question. So why don't you read today's question? All right. Today's question is, were you ever disappointed in one of your heroes? Well, when I read that question, just like all the other questions we have done in the past, at first, I have to give it some thought. It takes me a little while, sometimes it takes me a little longer to get an answer. And the same thing happened this time. It took me time. But when I got the answer, one thing led to another, as always. So I have prepared a good answer to that hero question today. Okay. So let's hear it. Were you so first of all? To forget being disappointed, who were your heroes? Who's the hero that we're going to talk about? Well, there's one main person that I thought about pretty quickly. My Aunt Mary, we were very close. My Aunt Mary lived in the neighboring town. And when I was a little girl, we were able to walk to her home in another city. They weren't that far away. And she was able to come to us. She lived in a nice area where there was a wonderful beach and park. And so our goal was frequently, my mother and I, I don't remember my father doing this, but my mother and I would walk to East Boston to visit my Aunt Mary and have a walk to the beach. And I remember a lot of wonderful things about her. She was a fun person and I was a little kid and I didn't really, I don't remember really can say that I had fun as a teenager, but when I was with my Aunt Mary, I had fun. And one of the times that stands out in my mind was when it was my birthday and we went to the park, nice, beautiful day, and she brought me a homemade birthday cake. I don't know how old I was, but I don't think I ever had a birthday cake. So I was thrilled. And she would come over and she would have fun with me. I don't remember the, what we did, but I always looked forward to having her company. And this went on in my childhood. And then when I grew a little older, and I don't remember if I was a young teenager at that point in time, we were sitting around the kitchen table and I thought I had a problem. I don't know what my teenage problem was, but I brought the subject up of what was bothering me. And my aunt said to me, "You, in other, I don't remember exactly, but she said to me, hey, kiddo, you don't know what trouble is. I have problems. And I didn't know anything about big problems or little problems. I had a, a sheltered childhood. And when she told me that my problem didn't mean much of anything because she had big problems. Mm -hmm. So that's what I remember that I was disappointed in her, in my hero, because she was the person I looked forward to and had fun with and she never said anything negative to me and 
And here she was telling me I didn't have a problem. So I didn't understand the grown up and she didn't understand the child. And wow. So, and so that, that I never forgot that. And like this question brought that to my mind. Wow. So Do you know what problems she was having or you would, you, remember, it just never got talked about. I can't remember at all. But it was some kid's problem. Maybe someone didn't include me in something, or maybe I got a good didn't get a good mark in school. I right. have no idea what it was. But to me, at that time, that was the problem, and she did not understand, and say to me, "Oh, Millie, you know, you'll handle it, and you'll grow out of it, or whatever." No, yeah, yeah. she was just telling me. She had big problems. And then later in life, I got the understanding of what her problems were. She had major problems. But as a kid, I didn't know about such things. So that was, that was my hero, disappointment in my hero. But then, then she redeemed she herself. herself. And then what? Did she Did redeem she herself? herself? No, no, that's the way that relationship was. We were always close. She was the member of the family that had a camera. My mother and father, they didn't have cameras, those little baby Kodaks. And my yep. Aunt Mary would come, and I have a few pictures that my Aunt Mary took of me and my cousin Wilma and my girlfriend's and I never would have had those pictures if it was not for her. So, so that time that I was disappointed in her, that passed, and she was my still good, loving Aunt Mary. It was okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, Steve, and what's who's your hero you were disappointed in? So... This question was a tough question for me. I, I've muted your mic just for a, a minute because we were getting some feedback, but I'll, I'll turn you back on in just a second. Um, you're okay, Ma. You don't have to do anything. Um, you can hear me, right? I, I can hear you, but I, don't, I can't read what the question popped up. No, I'm just, I just muted your mic for a second because oh, okay. it was making feedback. I'll turn you back on. I'll just tell you what, what, how I answered that question. Okay. Okay. So what I said was, so this was tough for me because I never really thought about it. And I, nothing sprung to mind as who my hero was. So we talked about answering this question a few days ago, and I had to think about this. And so, you know, Carol and I talked about it, and it seems that the person I admired most over the years was Steve Jobs from Apple. Yeah. And it, for me, it started in 1984 when he came to Boston and he unveiled the Macintosh to the public in front of the Boston Computer Society, which I was a member of. And that presentation was the best presentation I had ever seen in my whole life. I couldn't believe what I was seeing up on stage. He was a master at present presenting. And I was so inspired by him. At that time, I was working at a computer store, um, myself and a bunch of other members of the Computer Society. We formed the Boston Computer Society Macintosh Users Group. So that was extremely inspiring. And I went on to sell Macintosh computers and get involved in the Computer Society. So this leads me to being disappointed in him a couple of times. I went out to Apple headquarters once and I met with the head of the iMovie team because I was big and doing video on the computer and figuring out all these things. And I was going to give them feedback on how to make the program better. One thing I remember is I said, you know how many actions it takes to put a video on YouTube? And I had counted them. It was like 12 steps instead of 
nowadays you click a button and you say put this video on youtube back then it was what do you want to do save the video what format and i i sat in front of the guy and i showed him and we clicked and we counted 12 clicks and they agreed that was something that needed to change so we had a nice time together then we went to the cafeteria and in the cafeteria i saw steve jobs at the next table and i said you know i was all excited steve jobs i want to go say hi and the guy i was with said Oh, no, you don't approach Steve Jobs. Here, I'll just unmute you for, for a second. So that I was disappointed in. Because the rule was you don't go up and talk to Steve Jobs. Oh, my goodness. That was disappointing. Because, I, I mean, he was right there, and I wanted to talk to him, and I couldn't. So I, re I remember the day you went to that meeting, and you came home, and you were a different person. That meeting made you a whole different person and put you in a strong direction. He oh, yeah, that pretty could have changed my life right there. Yes, yes. I remember that day. Yeah. So yeah. then I got involved in the Macintosh Users Group. And what I did was I became the meeting coordinator and I scheduled companies to come in and talk to this user group in Boston. And we took over the Mass Art Auditorium, which could have had seating for 500. And it was full once a month meetings. So I had all the different software companies, Microsoft, and they would all do demos. And I would get up there. And since I worked at a computer store, I would bring in new software and do show and tell. And, oh, my God, I was just in my element and loving it. Loved it, loved it. And then um, Apple had Macworld. There was Macworld Magazine, and they had Macworld Convention in Boston. And then they had Macworld Convention out in San Francisco. So the Macintosh Users Group, we took a contingent out to California, and we had a booth, and we showed what we were doing with the users group. And I saw Steve Jobs on the show floor. Uh -huh. So I had a chance to go up to him and say hi. So I went up to him and I said, hi, Steve Garfield, Macintosh users group in yes. Boston. And so he's like, hi. And off he went. So I was oh. a little disappointed that he didn't really have much interest in like oh, who my. I was. I agree. And that, that was all that was. It was just, okay. you know, know. That reminds me of uh, when uh, my husband your father worked for GE and Aaron were out somewhere having dinner it must have been a GE event and the big guy and I don't remember his name now but the biggest guy that was in charge of GE at that time came over to came over to our table and he said hello to Aaron and he wow. knew who Aaron was and I never forgot that he spoke he knew everyone's name Yep. That's nice. Very nice. So that was his plus. And this guy, that was the second time he you had an opportunity. My chance. Yeah. And that's the way he was. Well, I mean, he was a busy guy. And but, I mean, you would think that he would do a little more than, than say hi, but I don't know what his day was like. I don't know anything well, about what happened. So, you know, I don't hold it against him. He was still a brilliant guy. Right. Okay. Yeah. He influenced you in a very positive way. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay. All right. Do you want to hear of something about two other people that I thought of that were my heroes that I lost some feelings and understanding for? Okay. Uh, when I was in my teens, that, that was in the 40s, I was hooked on going to the shows, the RKO in Boston, because all the big stars the orchestra leaders and the singers would come to the RKO. So what I did with my friends, we would skip school because we couldn't get enough of those bands and those singers. We would skip school, big deal. We went and we knew where the backstage was, where these artists would leave. So we would go backstage after a day seeing the show over and over again to wait for them to come out so we could see them in person and get their autographs. So one occasion was the Andrew sisters came. We saw the Andrew sisters and then we went backstage and there they were, the three of them. And I don't know which one it was, 
but she was talking to someone and I was close to her and I heard her conversation and she was swearing. And here I am, maybe 15, 15, 14 years old, and I heard my wonderful performer that I admired was swearing. Well, people didn't, comedy, comedy, comedians never swore like what goes on today. They say anything. But then you didn't hear anyone say any swear words. So that was one heroic person that I saw in a different light. And the other one was, I also was a fan of a singer with the Glenn Miller band. And we would go see Glenn Miller and go backstage and the whole thing. But I never did get to see this particular singer backstage. But after some time, he was no longer with the Miller band because I used to get the Downbeat magazine. I'm no, I'm no musician. But I read the magazine, I'd get it whenever it came out because I got to hear and learn about the lives of these singers that I thought were marvelous. Why and, would, Why was that unique that you had the Downbeat magazine? Well, I don't know how many people did it, but I was one that was so hooked. Every little thing that I knew about the band, the drummer, Mo Pirtle was the drummer, I remember <laughs> I remember the names of the people who played the saxophone and the trumpet, and all. I was really into it. Text no. medic, I wasn't well, thrilled with. Anyway, you were a groupie. I was a I was a groupie with my groupie friends. <laughs> that was my teenage excitement, and when I read the Downbeat magazine that the singer had left the band, I don't know whether he was fired or he left on his own. But he, I found out he was an alcoholic. Wow. That was a crushing blow to me because that was my guy. Wow. So those are the things I remembered because I had this question to think about. Wow. Wow. I haven't thought about that in years. But when it happened, it was a very disappointing experiences. Wow. Yeah. We would go to the theater stay all day, watch that movie huh, many times until the show came on. And then we would take turns saving our seats, going to the ladies room and having a lunch that we brought, going back into the theater to see another show. And we stayed all day. So just so I understand what's happening here, yes. you're watching a movie and seeing live people? Well, that was the show. You paid whatever a little amount it was. The program was the news of the day. That was one the thing. Movie Not news the reel. Yep. Was another thing, and a movie, whatever the movie was, and then there was the band, and the curtain opened. Before the curtain opened up, Miller started to play his music. Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller, and then the. The curtain would open slowly, and there was the band. Wow. And it was very, very exciting. And so I I was I was uh, hooked. I was hooked. And it wasn't enough for us to skip school one day. One day we went in the theater and we paid a price. We would go in the back door. I, they knew the management had to know these kids were sneaking in. Because we paid once and stayed a long time. And then we came another time and we went in through a certain door so we could see them again. So, so what was, you're telling me, what you're telling me is you paid to go see the movie and the band. Yes. And then this other time you snuck in the door. Yes. We knew a door to get into. And, and we stayed all day because when you first got in there, People had the front row seats. So if you stayed there longer, you worked your way up so you wound up in a better seat. So how many could... how many shows a day did the Glenn Miller band play in this theater? That's a good question. I don't More know. More than two? Um maybe two or three, because we didn't stay for, for the evening show. Well, why so, didn't the, the why didn't the management clear out the the theater in between shows. I don't know what 
I don't know. So the show ended, and then you'd go. The people in front would leave, and then you'd go closer and get better seats and stay right. and watch the news again and right. watch the movie again. Same right. movie. Right. Oh yeah. Nah, same, same movie. movie. Same movie. Yep. Yeah. And we then yeah. Glenn Miller would come and he'd play all the same songs. Yeah. Oh, and one time, now that we're talking, I remember <laughs> after all that time, then there was a theater in Boston, the Old Howard. It was a burlesque place. And they put on burlesque shows. But in addition, one time we found out, in addition to the burlesque show, they had a Glenn Miller movie. I don't think he was there in person, but it was when Glenn started to make movies and we found that out. So we kids went to the old burlesque house, the old Howard, to see the Miller movie. And when that Miller movie came to other theaters, we went to see the movie again. We couldn't get enough of him. So... What and to the, this day, I I still get excited and thrilled to hear his music. Okay, Ma, that's exciting, and I'm very interested in that. But I'm also interested in this burlesque show. Okay. What 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 went on there? The only thing I remember, <laughs> the funny thing that I remember is the Candy Man. There was a live Candy Man who would go around with his thing carrying the candy. Candy, candy, anyone for candy? That's I what you remember about the burlesque show, Ma? That I don't remember. No, but Ma, there were girls on stage that had, yes, no, I, did they have clothes on or what's going on here? Oh, well, they must have had clothes on. They were teasing. They did. They didn't, they really didn't take their clothes off. And I didn't pay attention. I wasn't interested. I was waiting for the movie. <laughs> But, Howard Theater is famous in Boston for being a burlesque right, theater. Right. No, I I can't remember. The only thing I remember was the candy man. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Ma. That's hilarious. <laughs> Did you ever hear me tell that story? Never. Okay. Oh, so there's something new. You, you, heard, you learned about your mother. She went yeah. to a burlesque. Burla, yeah, burl. Burlesque house just to see a Miller movie. And yeah. today you can see it at home in your comfort. Right, right. And when he died, he he died. He, he was in the service. He had volunteered the band. He volunteered his services. And they were flying. I think it involved England. And they never found what happened to him. Oh. He used to search it and talk about it. Yeah. He never found any evidence of what happened to him. But he was overseas volunteering his time. And that was a crushing that was a crushing thing. Wow. To this day when they write about something about that era, they'll mention Miller. Yep. Yep. Those were wonderful, exciting times. Yep, that's amazing. Well, we had a great time chatting. I enjoyed it. Okay, me, me too. Me too. And now, as soon as we get through here, first chance I get, I'll, I'll look and see what I can talk about, what we can talk about next week. Now, All right, well, I see your phone's ringing, so I'll let you get the phone, Ma. Is, is that really a person or is that you? No, it's just me ending the show. Okay. All right. All right, bye-bye. Or so long.